Uranium mining affected not only the miners, but also the Native American communities that live near the mining sites. During the 1950s and 1960s, uranium companies mined for uranium ore on Navajo lands in northern Arizona. Many of the local people were sheep herders. After mining operations ended, huge craters or open pits that scarred the landscape were filled by groundwater, a water source that beckoned the Navajo families living in an arid land. But the open pits held contaminated soil, resulting in the contamination of the water that rose and filled them. Uh, they would blast uh, to get down to a vein and create a bowl type of area. The Navajos came here to swim. Uh, they would bathe, wash clothes. Uh, they would fill the baby bottles with water from the pits. And as a result, there were many Navajos who herded in the area who uh, suffer health problems as a result of exposure to these types of pits. For example, uh, there is a family that lives in the area. Uh, the mother was a sheep herder for the family. Uh, she was pregnant and, and with her two daughters. At the time, she frequented these pits herding the sheep, and the daughters suffer from uh, birth defects and neuropathy. Neuropathy is a nerve degeneration, and what it has caused in the local Navajos here are the fingers to draw up into the palms and become fused into the palms. Uh, it causes the same phenomenon with the feet. The feet draw under and uh, eventually they lose use of their feet and their legs and become wheelchair bound. On behalf of several Navajo families, Rebecca Lawrence has taken legal action against corporate uranium mining giants like Kerr McGee and the Vanadium Corporation of America, a precedent in U.S. legal history. Uranium mining is perceived by many to have been an experiment on human health, but today it is claimed that another experiment is underway involving uranium. This consists of the use of depleted uranium, or DU. This is a heavily stockpiled waste product of the nuclear industry. Depleted uranium is used in the manufacture of armaments, and was used by U.S. and British forces for the first time in the Gulf War of 1991. There was no doubt in the Defense Department's mind that there would be long-term effects from the depleted uranium. That was part of the calculation. They assumed that this was acceptable to do, and they went and they did it. They knew what they were doing. They knew what they were doing very, very well. And they decided to turn the combat zone in the Gulf War, in the Persian Gulf area, into the world's largest open air experiment in the impacts of low level radiation on the human body. There was a group of 24 United States troops who were referred to me in the summer of 1991 for examination and opinion. I'm saying that at least a large percentage of the troops that were referred to me were suffering from the consequences of exposure to certain pathogenic factors. One of them in my assessment was depleted uranium. If you were to ask um, most Gulf vets about whether they thought there was um, an international cover-up, you know, to, to hide the real cause of, of Gulf War illnesses, they would say probably to a man and a woman, yes, that's what they believed. The, the wider consequences of the Gulf War, um, in, in summary, I would say Gulf vets themselves more or less to, to, to a person would say they had been experimented on if they were asked about um, them, what their experiences mean overall for them. Um, but the wider consequences include environmental, um, an environmental disaster, the, the, the uh, battlefields of Kuwait and Iraq um, are contaminated for 
whatever the half-life of DU is, you know. Um, and all the equipment that was buried, the, the equipment that was hit by DU that's been buried uh, in Saudi Arabia. Presumably Saudi Arabia is also um, contaminated as well. Uh, the impact on, on the local civilian population is something we don't hear a great deal about, you know, but obviously humanitarian concerns would suggest that, that uh, we should know about what's happening, you know. And that the wider issues for Gulf veterans uh, who've had children uh, in the UK post-Gulf War is something really that needs to be um, explored uh, uh, and opened up further. Cover-up has been going on for several reasons. Reason number one is that uh, no government in the world would like to be implicated as being accomplice in the uh, acts against humanity. Number two reason is financial and fiscal concerns because we do know that billions upon billions of dollars have been committed for the depleted uranium cleanup procedures, especially by the Department of Energy in the United States. So cleanup procedure for the last decade of this century was estimated to be $200 billion. It is obvious that any government would want to save $200 billion, and it was saved in the Gulf War by depositing it in the desert of Iraq instead of disposing it uh, in the cleanup procedures. And the ultimate reason for the cover-up is potential litigation costs and compensation of the veterans who have been exposed to uranium, because if it is proven successfully that they have been uh, contaminated and that contamination caused Gulf War syndrome, there would be litigation procedures all over the United States, England, allied country, countries, and it would uh, uh, literally cost uh, billions upon billions of dollars. Large quantities of DU bullets and shells were fired off into Kuwait and Iraq. The link between health effects and the use of depleted uranium are also being investigated in Iraq. We registered in the Ministry of Health for the civilian and military personnel that there is unusual numbers of cases of leukemias and other cancers, uh, cancer of the skin, cancer of the bones, and cancers of the breast and, and even of the GI with the high percent of increase of the cancers of the urinary tracts. We notice also uh, in, the, in the hospitals uh, to the first time registered in the Iraq, the congenital anomalies, there is a very highly confidence that those cases is related to the depleted uranium. Not only is DU an issue of human health and the environment, but it also has serious implications in terms of human rights and international law.